All right. Well, welcome, everybody, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to update uh, folks. Uh, I imagine many of you here situationally to understand uh, what was announced yesterday in more detail and specificity as it relates to the first, uh, apparently, first community uh, sourced uh, transfer of the virus. Uh, I want to first, though, contextualize uh, this moment and contextualize California's role as it relates to the issue that uh, is in front of us. Uh, I've been very proud to be uh, a resident of this great state for over 50 years. I had the privilege of growing up uh, in and around San Francisco through the HIV and AIDS epidemic. I saw firsthand uh, the incredible capacity and resolve and compassion, empathy, drive, the innovative spirit that defined our march to meet those moments in the past. Uh, how richly resourced we were, not just financially, but in spirit uh, and in resolve. I had the opportunity over the course of decades in public service as a county supervisor uh, and as mayor of a county, San Francisco, uh, to work very closely and collaboratively with the state of California, federal agencies, to address issues large and small, issues around MERS and SARS, issues around H5N1, not just H1N1, uh, issues around Ebola and our response to those situational challenges and crises. I saw firsthand the incredible expertise uh, and commitment and resolve of people at all level of government. And as a consequence, many of those things are in our rear view mirror as it relates to the acuity of our consciousness and focus. Uh, accordingly, we'll meet this moment. Uh, we will express and advance similar resolve uh, on the issue of this uh, novel coronavirus. Uh, and we will accordingly uh, attach ourselves to a little bit of understanding of our history and our capacity to meet pandemics head on, both in pre-planning, both addressing pandemic in real time, and more importantly, in many respects, post-pandemic. Over the course of decades, now the state of California formally has adopted uh, some renewed strategies. And those strategies are advanced on an annual basis. Uh, through formal efforts at the local level, regional, state, and federal level to work to build capacity and build partnerships. The state of California invests millions of dollars a year to require communities, large and small in this state, to uh, advance uh, protocols, uh, to do uh, very comprehensive annual uh, vent plans uh, and to continue to develop relationships, not just develop policies and planning documents. Relationships and trust at the end of the day matter more than anything else. Uh, we had a number of those, by the way, uh, conducted at scale last November. It was just a month or so later, last December, that we first uh, were afforded the opportunity to learn more about what was happening overseas in Asia. Uh, I am very proud of being a former mayor of San Francisco uh, with the first and largest Chinatown in the United States, one of the largest uh, Chinese populations, Asian populations, more broadly defined per capita in a part of our country, accordingly being governor of the most diverse state in the world's most diverse democracy, also affords us a capacity of understanding and, again, strong formal relationships that have been developed over the course of decades. Uh, those relationships uh, allowed us to advance in real time an understanding and scoping of the challenge that inevitably would be presented. Uh, we worked more formally uh, with the Trump administration and continue to work formally and very collaboratively with the Trump administration at all levels uh, to coordinate and collaborate. That coordination and collaboration, you may recall, uh, initiated in a number of repatriation flights that came to the United States. And rather than turning our backs on those repatriation flights, uh, we supported uh, with partnerships at CDC and other federal agencies uh, those repatriation efforts as American citizens first, as Californians advancing our values uh, second. Uh, and we coordinated those first flights, the first flight in particular, uh, in January, late January, down into Riverside uh, at Marsh. Uh, we've had a number of other flights, including the most recent uh, at Travis Air Force Base in Solano County. Uh, over 800 people have come in on those flights, but that's a small part of the overall picture. 
thousands and thousands of other people have come in on more traditional flights through the state of California. Some 8,400 plus uh, are currently being monitored uh, with 49 local jurisdictions doing those protocols and monitoring as it relates to more traditional commercial flights that came in uh, from points of concern and potential points of contact, uh, particularly in Asia. As you may know, as of today, and I say as of today at this hour, uh, we have 33 confirmed positive tests for the virus. Five individuals have subsequently moved out of state. So there are 28 people that we know in the state of California uh, that are positive. The case yesterday understandably generated a lot of attention, but didn't surprise any of the folks standing to my left or right. We knew this was inevitable as it relates to the nature, the epidemiology, the nature of these viruses that that incident would occur. Accordingly, uh, when hearing about it, uh, we initiated a series of protocols that we were prepared to advance. Uh, those protocols include deep tracking and tracing of individuals that would be in contact with this individual, uh, working again in collaboration and partnership uh, with uh, our federal partners, uh, and working with the extraordinary, extraordinarily talented and committed frontline workers, in both in the healthcare uh, sector and but more broadly uh, defined uh, at the local and county level. We are currently uh, in deep partnership with CDC on one overriding protocol that drives our principal focus right now, and that's testing, and the importance to increase our testing protocols and to have point of contact diagnostic testing as our top priority, not just in the state of California, but I imagine all across the United States. Uh, we had conversations just, I don't want to say moments ago, but within last few hours with CDC assuring us that the testing protocols will be advanced uh, with urgency. Uh, we have just a few hundred testing kits in the state of California, and that's surveillance testing as well as diagnostic testing that's simply inadequate to do justice to the kind of testing that is required to address this issue head on. And I'm very pleased the CDC uh, is moving expeditiously on that and have made firm commitments to the state of California uh, that will significantly and exponentially expand our capacity to advance those testing protocols. <clears throat> Nothing more important than point of contact diagnostic testing that can be readily made available so that we can have full, full spectrum testing uh, of this disease. And so that is, or rather of this virus. And so that's uh, our top priority as it relates to the moment. And again, uh, we are pleased with the response that uh, we have just received from uh, our representatives, the federal government. Uh, we have today, though, representatives from a number of state agencies that will talk uh, more learnedly and more specifically about the protocols and procedures that are underway as it relates to modeling uh, this virus in the state, uh, looking at vaccine protocols, uh, when, not if, when the vaccine uh, avails itself, uh, looking at the strategies uh, of cooperation uh, at a multi-jurisdictional level, uh, be it not just with state and local and federal officials, but also uh, nonprofits, NGOs, uh, and private sector participants. Uh, that's why we have assembled here today the head of our Health and Human Service uh, Agency, uh, who will speak uh, just after me. Uh, he'll hand it off to Dr. Angel, uh, who represents public health system uh, and someone many you in California are quite familiar with, uh, the head of our Office of Emergency Services, not to um, uh, elevate anxiety in relationship to the Office of Emergency Services, but uh, our uh, leader as it relates to wildfires and relating to natural disasters, but also our leader in logistics as it relates to the modeling and gaming out uh, of our next phase strategies if they are necessary. I long-windedly uh, have just said the following. We're meeting this moment. We have been in constant contact with federal agencies. Uh, we have history and expertise in this space. Um, we are not overreacting, but nor are we underreacting. 
to the understandable anxiety many people have uh, as it relates uh, to this novel virus. At the same time, no better resource state in America to address this issue head on and no better team assembled that have taken account and responsibility from day one to meet this moment. So it's in that spirit that I now will ask Dr. Galley uh, to come up and express uh, his points of view and he will pass uh, his uh, podium on to the two other representatives of agencies and we're here of course to answer any question you subsequently may have. Dr. Galley. Thank you.